Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to week three of Cook Along with Chef Tom. Um, welcome back to the School of Food. We've got a lovely uh, two recipes uh, to make today. We're going to be making our lovely flatbreads, which we're going to pan fry. And we're also going to make a lovely marinade to go on top of our beautiful, fantastic uh, flatbreads we're making. Marinade into the roast vegetables. There we go. Um, hopefully, you have got your ovens on at the moment. There's 220 degrees, that's set to a fan oven or a gas mark 7. The recipe, I'll give you a little rundown very quickly now, just so we're getting ourselves ready, getting everything in place and ready to go before we start cooking. I always find that's an easy way to do with uh, our, you know, getting things in place, getting things ready to go. Makes life a lot easier for us, we're not trying to scrabble around later on. Okay, um, so we should have some uh, strong white flour and some wholemeal flour. If you're going to be making gluten-free flatbreads today uh, using your gluten-free recipe, I've got a slightly different tweak today to what you're going to do. I will show you very quickly how to do that later on. It's really simple. Um, I'll come back to that later. But, um, and if you don't have both flours, uh, we like to do this with both flours because it gives us a nice uh, nutty flavour from the wholemeal flour, but also that stretchiness from the strong flour. Just use one or the other. Absolutely fine. The strong is, is quite important because it gives us our elasticity like pizza. So, having your water ready as well, and we've got some baking powder and a teaspoon or so of salt. We've got a few people signing in uh, to say hello. Um, I've also got the lovely Calton here to uh, help us with any chat boxes that um, you have questions, pop them into your uh, little box on the corner here. If I miss them while I'm reading them, I've got Calton over here to see us. Uh, hopefully everything's uh, working well over here, Carlton. Okay, so looks like having a bit of difficulty with our camera angle for some reason today. Um, maybe you can see us a little bit better now. Okay. I'm going to stand a little bit more here today. For some reason, our computer decides to... Uh, it's always great when technology wants to work, especially on live TV as well. Uh, I'm going to stand a little bit more here so you can see me a bit better. Um, just slide in a little bit. Okay. Uh, so, uh, just to recap, if you haven't seen me already, we've got uh, some flour, which is strong flour. We've got some wholemeal flour, and we've got salt and baking powder as well. We've got water over here and that's for our flatbreads we've also got I'm going to show you over here um, what I've got for my uh, vegetables uh, and on here guys for our marinade we've got lemon garlic rosemary we've also got some chili flakes and some olive oil and Kelton's got a question for us Mimi Plain flour is okay to use, yes. Thank you, Kelton. So uh, just in case you can hear Kelton in the background, guys, Mimi's asked, can we use plain white flour? That's fine to use for flatbreads. Um, it, will, it just might be a little bit more crumbly, that's all. Um, so our marinades, garlic, rosemary, lemon, and chili. And then we've also got, for our roasted vegetables, really nice selection today of broccoli, a red onion, a courgette, and a nice handful of cherry tomatoes as well. Uh, some of you might be questioning why I've got a nice big blue plaster on my hand. Fortunately, I cut back of my finger the other day. Absolutely fine, guys. Don't worry. I, um, I'm okay. I still have my finger in place. That's fine. Um, don't have to worry about asking how I am in the chat box. But thank you for thinking of me. So, um, marinade ingredients. Lemon, garlic, rosemary. And then we have our roasted vegetables of cherry tomatoes, broccoli, red onion and courgette. If you've had anything else, um, perhaps a sweet potato or other vegetables that you've decided to use today, absolutely fine to go with. Um, everything will taste good in this roasted vegetable mix. So I'm going to bring you back to um, me now. We're going to get started very shortly. Hopefully your ingredients are together. What I usually do is have a little list behind me so that, uh, or in front of me rather, so I can see it. Um, 
so I can read as I go along, making sure that I'm checking my weights and checking my measurements as I go. Um, and just to remind everyone, the oven's on at 220 degrees. I've got my flatbread recipe, so I'm going to make that first. Then I'm going to make my marinade and my vegetables. And then while we're there roasting, we're going to come back. So, um, a quick thing about us. The Hackney School of Food. We are based in uh, Clapton. We are a food education hub which uh, is the, the brainchild of the charity Chefs in Schools and the Leap Federation of Schools um, in Hackney. We are here to improve child health by teaching them great food, teaching them like using great knife skills and the better, the better they can then to cook for themselves at home. Um, Shetland Schools is a charity that's uh, aiming to uh, bring their skill uh, and expertise of chefs into school kitchens so that uh, we can provide really great food uh, and get kids talking about food uh, so they will develop a really nice lifelong passion and, and interest with food. So that's what Shetland Schools do. Leap Federation uh, combines and the Hackney School of Food was born uh, to be a classroom uh, that is totally dedicated to uh, cooking, which is uh, really, really great. I love talking about food. I love eating food. I love sharing food. Um, so please tell us what you're up to, guys. If you are um, taking pictures uh, or anything today, please remember to tag us uh, at Hackney School of Food on Instagram or if you're on Twitter, at Chefs and Schools and you will see us and we'll re re retweet them, repost them, so that you can see what we're up to and I can see what you're up to as well, okay? So, a little introduction from us. Hopefully you've got your ingredients ready and we're gonna start cooking, okay? So, flatbreads first. If you're, wearing a, if you're using a scales, guys, just remember to set it to zero and we're using grams today. Um, so it's 100 grams each of strong white flour and uh, strong, and strong wholemeal, or just normal wholemeal is fine. As I said, if, uh, if you are using plain, you can do that, not a problem. Uh, it will just mean that your dough might be a little crumbly later on, but it'll be absolutely fine, really, because these flatbreads are so easy to make. If you're using gluten-free flour, I'll come on to that in just a second. Uh, so don't worry, guys, I haven't forgotten that I have also said that I'll show you how to make that. So we've got 100 and 100 in our... Uh, bowl here. We're going to add in a teaspoon of baking powder. And this baking powder is what's going to give us our little rise, our little lift inside our flatbreads. And we're going to put in a tea, half a teaspoon of salt so that gives us flavour. We're also going to add in 130 millilitres or 130 grams because if you're ever baking uh, water, one gram of water is equal to one milliliter of water. So resetting my scales here. To make life easier, I'm just going to make a little well in the middle of my bowl here. So you can see the bottom of the bowl through the middle of the flour. That's just going to make life easier for me when I pour that inside. 130 mils. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to give that a mix just to bring it, start bringing it together. And at this point, we can start seeing things just combining. Once you've got this like this, we're just going to get rid of the scales. We won't need to use those now. Having a look here in my bowl, you can see that as I'm bringing uh, the spoon around, it begins to clean the side of the bowl. And you can do that by also just using the side of the spoon to scrape a little bit. And as it comes together, this is a good sign that your dough is the right consistency. Okay, so you can see now I've got a great dough here going on. Scraping that off the back of my spoon. And we're going to add a little bit of flour onto our work surface, just a tad. Making sure you get all that lovely dough in one ball. And then we're going to knead. So kneading is a very simple process, guys, where we push and stretch the dough forwards. And what that does is it creates these nice long strands of gluten. This is why strong, strong dough is really good for this. But if you are using plain flour, it just means the gluten won't quite be as long. That's what I mean about it being more crumbly. And as you push the dough forward, you begin to see, it begins a little bit sticky, that's okay. You begin to see these little lines forming. Folding it back, 
and twisting it round means that we're going to make sure that the whole bit of the dough is going to create a fantastic uh, even amount of gluten. So pushing out forward to stretch, folding it back. When you fold as well, you begin to take this tight outer layer. That's something really helpful for us later on. So pushing forward, folding back, and I'm just a twist as well. So this is kneading. Whatever kind of bread you're making, whether it's the soda bread you saw us make a couple of weeks ago, pizza dough, uh, sourdough, any kind of bread, guys, this kneading process is really uh, a good skill to learn. Pushing forward, folding back. And if you get bits that fall off, don't worry. Just stick it back together. If your hands are a bit sticky, you can see I've got nice wet bits on my hands, you're just going to get a pinch of flour on them and rub off all the sticky bits. And we're going to push, fold, and twist. Push, fold, and twist. And as we do this, you'll see that it begins to get tighter and tighter and tighter, bringing all those bits back in. You can see I'm only putting a little bit of flour on my work surface. Too much flour is going to make the dough really dry. Pushing and folding, twisting, pushing and folding, and twisting. We do lots of big practice movements when we're doing this in, in the actual school with actual children here, guys. You should see the, the pantomime drama that happens with the push, stretch, and fold. It's really good. Hopefully, you're playing along at home. And you should be in, get to see this kind of smooth outside area. And as you begin to stretch the dough out, your gluten forms, and it becomes nice and smooth. And then you give this a little poke, okay? I'm gonna bring this nice and close to the camera so you can see all better. And as you poke in, guys, like that, you should be able to see it kind of spring back. Once it springs back, we do a couple more. This dough takes three or four, maybe five minutes tops if you're feeling particularly lazy this afternoon. Um, giving a little poke there, you can see it begins to spring back. That means it's ready for the next stage. And the next stage is really easy if you're just leaving it for a rest, okay? So you pop it back in a bowl, and uh, if you have a clean tea towel near you, just pop that over the top. Nice and simple. We're gonna do, pop that to one side, so that it's just gonna rest, okay? For those of you playing along with the gluten-free recipe, in here, gang, we've got our um, gluten-free flour. I'm using a self-raising, so I don't have to add any uh, baking powder, but if you're not, if you just have a plain gluten-free flour, add in a, a teaspoon of baking powder. Uh, we're going to add something called xanthan gum, which helps give us a nice stretch to this dough. So that's in there already, as well as our pinch of salt. Again, we're going to make a little well in the middle, and in we pour our milk with a splash of olive oil, and just give that a mix, okay? And mix it round, and you can see the same process is happening like this. If you are not using dairy, uh, a dairy-free substitute uh, milk is fine. Oat milk is really great, or even just some water. Uh, I really like the milk in this dough because the, the protein in the milk helps bind the dough a little bit better. And you can see, as it comes together, it does the same thing as in uh, our old bowl, our gluten bowl, should we call it? It's cleaning the sides. At this point, we scrape off the sides. We use some gluten-free flour on the, on the surface. Push that together. Now, there's no gluten in gluten-free flour. It says, that's what it says on the tin. So the xanthan gum adds that ability to, to bind together to stretch. So as you push it, you'll find, if you try and do the same thing, guys, it gets crumbly. So we're not going to need, we just sort of fold and, and push and fold and push. And what that does is it activates the, the xanthan gum, which is the similar style, you know, there's the similar thing that's going on from our, our gluten in our, which is found normally in, in wheat, okay? And as you see, as I'm folding and I'm just pushing it down, it begins to have that sort of roundness as well. And we're going to leave that to rest, okay? Gluten-free. Done. Pa uh, a little tea towel over the top, and that's ready to go. So, just a very quick recap. So the flatbreads, for those of you keeping up, we put in 100 grams of strong white flour, 100 grams of wholemeal flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, 130 milliliters of water, and a tablespoon of olive oil. We've mixed it together, Pushed, stretched, and folded to knead the dough to so it's nice and stretchy. 
when that's um, stretchy and smooth, we put it to one side to rest. If we're doing the gluten-free, all of the ingredients go in a bowl together, mix it, and then squash it and, and manipulate it until it's a nice smooth dough. I'm quickly going to wash my hands, but while you're uh, waiting there, I'm just going to give you a quick preview of what we're going to do next. So we're going to make the marinade, which is the lemon, garlic, rosemary, chili flakes, and salt with some olive oil. And our vegetables are coming after that, which today I'm using some broccoli, red onion, courgette, and cherry tomatoes. We'll also need our, um, our chopping boards, our knives, because we're going to do some chopping uh, and making sure that this lovely marinade is going to get really, really tasty. And that's how we're going to impart loads of flavour into our food. So the marinade is there, ready to go. Having a little tidy of your section as you're working. And a quick tip for you, gang. Now, if you're going to be using your chopping boards, all you need to do is put a little bit of tea towel, a little bit of wet paper towel, or a tea towel underneath them. Now I like to use uh, blue paper because there's lots of it in the kitchen. So what I do, just grab a little bit of um, blue paper, add some water to it. Someone said they forgot the olive oil. They forgot the olive oil. No problem at all. Um, not a problem. The olive oil just helps things become um, a little bit stretchy. It doesn't help, it doesn't rise too much. If you put a little bit of olive oil over the top of your dough now, that's absolutely fine. When we come back to it later, we'll squish it together and it will be uh, absolutely great. Not a problem, guys. We're keeping things nice and simple. Don't have to worry about putting things in the wrong or right place in the wrong or right order, really, with this recipe. So, back to um, my chopping board. I've just put some wet blue paper towel underneath. As I say, at home, you can use a tea towel. We can um, make sure that that's nice and solid. Also get our nice sharp knife. I'm going to use a nice uh, a cook's knife, but if you're using um, a powering knife at home, just make sure that you're using it safely. I'll show you how to hold that in just a moment. I always have a little cereal bowl or an extra bowl next to me. That's my bin bowl. Anything that um, I don't need while I'm cooking, so while I'm um, making rubbish, we put it into the bin bowl and keep things nice and tidy. A tidy chef is a happy chef, as I always say to our students. Our marinade, half a lemon, two cloves of garlic, and I've got some lovely rosemary which I picked from the garden this morning, our lovely School of Food Gardens, which are looking a bit tidier at the moment. Not much going on, we've got a few signs of life, we've got some uh, daffodils poking through, the first shoots of rhubarb are coming as well, so we're really looking forward to the next few months when our gardens really come to life. Um, hopefully when we're all allowed back out again you can come and see us and see our fantastic gardens. Uh, marinade, lemonade, lemon, lemonade please, if anyone has one, send it to me, Hackney School of Food. Um, we've got lemon, we've got garlic, we've got rosemary. With a bit of uh, chili flakes as well. If you're not using chili flakes, you find them a little bit too hot, just black pepper, absolutely fine to use. A uh, bit of salt and some of our delicious olive oil. We're going to start off with our garlic. I'm going to take the skins off the garlic. Now, these are really easy to do. You just use your hand, palm of your hand, give it a little squash, and as you've squashed it, it kind of pops the jacket. As the jacket comes off, nice and easy. I'll do that again. Some chefs also like to use the side of the blaze, just giving a little crush. I find that actually it's safer just to use the palm of your hands and you don't end up wearing nice big blue plasters like I am today. So, taking that skin off, this is always the fiddly bit. We're going to um, start chopping these in a moment, so making sure that your area is nice and clear, okay? What I'm going to do is pop my other ingredients back in the bowl to one side so that I have a nice, clear working space. And I'm going to remind everybody how to hold your chef's knives. Okay? So your chef's knives, you're going to do a little pinch grip. Okay? I'm right-handed, so this is what I'm using my right hand. If you're left-handed, you're just going to do exactly the same thing just with your left hand. Right fingers are going to hold up the top. Okay? So you can see pinch and grip and then your fingers wrap around the handle like so. 
and then you're not going to put your finger on top of the blade. Okay, doing that is going to give you a bit of a wobble. If you're using a barring knife, you can put your finger on top of the blade because it's such a smaller knife. Finger on top of the blade like that is actually going to give you more control. So it's not that this, is, the finger on top, is a bad thing. Always, it depends on what kind of knives you are using. Okay, if I was using a filleting knife to take some fish apart or a boning knife to take uh, chicken to pieces, I would use my finger to help um, control and put pressure exactly where it's needed. It helps the fine details. When we're doing general chopping with these big chef knives, pinching in the middle where it's nice and balanced and gripping the handle is your safest, easiest way of doing it. Okay, so quickly now onto our garlic. Holding with your pinch and grip, and then your claw. Remember your claw, your fingers come down like this, your thumb stands at the back. And the idea with this is that the, your fingers, claw, that little shape kind of protects the fingertips. And as I'm chopping, you can see I'm going backwards here. Okay, if I do a little bit of side on to my knife, down and forward, and it resets, going in slow-mo here. We've got a question coming in. Just about the olive oil game. The olive oil in the dough. Yeah. Don't worry, gang. Absolutely fine if your olive oil didn't go into the dough when you were mixing. If you take your tea towel off or your cling film, whatever you've covered your bowl in, take it off now. Um, do a, a, a splurge of your olive oil over the top. Leave it alone like that. We'll come back to that later on. Okay? I will ask Calton to remind me to tell you and the olive oil. As I say, guys, it's not too much of a problem if the olive oil hasn't gone in yet. We can work with that later on. So, uh, back to our garlic, nice and thin slices. We're now going to use the cross chop. And the cross chop, your knife stays on the board, okay? But instead of going out and forwards, it comes across you with three fingers just sitting on top, and you go up and down. And you just go up and down, up and down, up and down. And this is how we make a finer dice of our garlic. I'll show you that again. Bring everything back to the middle, and you go up and down, you walk your knife through the pile of garlic. So, once you've got that started, what we're going to do now is we're going to take our rosemary and place it on top. We don't want the, the big stalk of the rosemary, okay? This is a woody herb, which means that's going to be very tough and, and hard for us to eat. It does have a lot of flavour, so um, if you uh, were following along last week when we made our stock, that's going into our stock. Um, or if you want to make uh, lovely kebabs that are going on barbecues, it's not quite the right time of year, but a good tip for you is break them into little pieces like this, and then that's your kebab skewer. And as that cooks on the barbecue, that fabulous flavour of rosemary goes into whatever you're cooking, whether it's vegetable kebabs, chicken kebabs, lamb kebabs. But um, that's one way of using those, those spears. Okay? So, a pile of rosemary and garlic. We're going to add a little pinch of salt at this point, and we're going to continue to that rock chop. And what happens here is all the flavour of the garlic and the rosemary start to get together and have a really good time, create lots of flavour. Beautiful. Then we are going to pop all of that lovely garlic, rosemary and salt into our bin bowl. Sorry, not our bin bowl, our mixing bowl. We don't want to throw this away, this is all of our flavour. You can see uh, all that chopped in the bottom. At this point, we want to squeeze in our lemon. Normally I would show you how to catch them with your hand underneath, but I'm not going to get lemon juice in my cut because that's probably the most painful thing I can think of right now. Um, as you squeeze the lemon juice, guys, you can see I'm holding it in my hand. I'm just double checking if any pips fall in. Okay? Pips aren't that nice to eat. They're very bitter. Okay, Don't confuse them for pine needles or pine nuts. We're now going to add in four tablespoons of olive oil. One, two... Three and four. Give that a good stir and a nice big pinch of chili flakes. Calton, you I remember you love chili, don't you? I love chili, but this is the third time we've got a, a olive oil question. Okay. But when does the olive oil go into the mix? So if the olive oil if you're talking about the olive oil with the flatbread, the flatbread olive oil, if you haven't put it in with the dough, don't worry. Just pour the olive oil on top of your dough. That's only for people who haven't put it in with their, their mix already. So that's absolutely fine. Put it over the top. If you're talking about the olive oil for the marinade that I'm doing now, um, that's just gone in on top of the lemon juice and everything else. Okay? So the marinade's there. We're going to leave that to one side for everything to 
work together. And then we're going to start chopping our vegetables. Okay. This time I've got a big bowl next to me so I can put them straight in. Now, our courgette, we're going to start off. This is going to be a bit wobbly. It's also quite large for my knife to work with. So we're going to chop that in half first. So using the claw, chop in half. And then we're going to use the bridge. So the bridge is basically your fingers go over the top like this, and the knife in the middle. Okay, so it's kind of the bridge and your knife there. Start off like this, and then you push down. Now we have flat surfaces to work on. We're going to go back to the claw, and we're going to chop these. Okay, I'm going to do half moons, so they look like this, like a semicircle. And we're looking about a centimetre or two thick, about the, the, the width of your little finger. Okay, remember that claw is keeping your vegetable nice and secure. We're using the flat side down first. And as you're chopping, that knife is, is using the rocking motion. Okay, the rocking motion of the knife kind of reminds me of a rocking horse or a steam train. So claw is only when it's, when it's not wobbly. So we're going to start off with a bridge, getting it started once, so you can see the knife's cutting slightly, and then pushing down. Okay, and the knife, as you can see from this angle now, you mind going down and forward to cut, like so. Down and forward, just like so. The top bit of the courgette, that can be kept to one side. We're going to put that into our stock. If you're using that school of food, we also have our food waste uh, composting bin, so nothing goes to waste. It all goes back into our gardens. Next up is our red onion, a big one here today. So we want to make sure that we're going to use all of it. We're going to take off this papery skin. Good tip to, to stop things from slipping is just see what you can take off by just kind of smushing it in your hands first things that come off are the ones that might cause a little bit of trouble later on. This is obviously a round thing, so we're going to start off cutting with the bridge. Knife through the middle. Get it started, remember, before pushing down and coming back. And then we're going to take off the top and the bottom, because we're going to make these into little wedges. So top and bottom. Remember, clearing your chopping board as you work bottom and then we're going to peel off this skin okay a lot of times people ask me you know how do you stop the onions from making you cry when you're chopping the best thing to do is have a sharp knife okay the onions um, make you cry because they get bruised and there's um, a compound in there called sulfur dioxide sulfur, sulfuric acid that makes you cry sharp knife doesn't do as much bruising the other thing is stand in a like by the window when you're chopping I'm going to chop in like this with our claw. You can see I'm just going, basically I'm following the up and down lines of the onion, up and down, so we're cutting along these, so we have these nice big chunks, and they break down into little petals like this. That all goes into our chopping bowl. Again, that claw, like so. In we go. Now we're going to add in our tomatoes. So the tomatoes, we've got cherry tomatoes. We've got a nice selection here. I've actually got some nice um, plum tomato, cherry plums. We've got some little baby ones. Lots of lovely flavour. This is they're going to be the basis of our sauce. Okay. Now these are all round. So what we want to do with this one, obviously, going with our bridge. And you can see, cutting it in half. Okay, you can cut them into halves. You can leave if they're really small, like these little ones. I'm actually going to leave them whole because um, they'll break down nicely as we cook at such a high temperature in the oven. Okay. Chopping through. If you're using a powering knife, just to show you with that, guys, your bridge is still the same. Your fingers on top. You can see a bit more control as you're working with it. Okay, last thing to go in here. Broccoli. I've got a half a stalk here. You know, if you break these off, guys, they're going to be beautiful, huge, you know, kind of homemade tender stem broccoli here doing this. Um, just ripping that with your hands like that. Try and get them into bite-sized pieces so that you don't have to do too much work when you're plating up. If you can't do that, if you can't break them down to their bite-sized pieces, just use that knife. Don't get rid of the flavor of this, these lovely leaves. They're going to go in our bowl as well. 
chop them in half. You can see just using that claw to keep things steady as I chop. There's lots of beautiful food in this, in this uh, today. We can even, if our broccoli stalks aren't too old, they're not too um, tough, so I'm going to trim off the bottom and then I'm going to cut them into long wedges as well. Okay, Broccoli stalks are absolutely beautiful to eat. They take a little bit longer sometimes or are high heat or they're boiled or in stock. Really great. I actually like to eat these raw as well. They're great in coleslaw. So we've got a nice big bowl of vegetables. Um, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to get my marinade into a big bowl. There we go. And pour all that over the top. Absolutely beautiful. Give that a stir with that spoon. And then those going. You can cook these straight away because that flavour is going to get soaked up by the vegetables as you cook or if you leave them for a little bit. Um, that's absolutely fine. They're going to go straight into the oven, like so, onto a, a tray, my oven, reminding you of 220 degrees, like so, like this. Now, I've piled this nice and high because what's going to happen here with these is they're going to get bits on top, going to go nice and crunchy, bits on the side, nice and crunchy, the tomato is going to soften up, but the ones in the middle, they're going to create steam. So what's going to happen is that steam is kind of going to get into a juice, and that's going to make sure that when we eat our flatbreads later on, everything's going to taste really great. Okay, so this is where I uh, ask Calton, the camera person, as well as Calton, the producer, to pick, pick up the camera, and she's going to follow me over to the oven. There we go. Can you see me okay, wave? Yep, yeah, great. So 220 degrees, in we go. And we're going to start off the timer of about 12 minutes, just to see how things are going in there. Okay, so that's ready to go. We're going to crack on with our flatbreads. Thanks, Calton. We're going to do a little bit of a quick cleanup. Knife skills are done now, so we will pop the knives to one side. Just remember, guys, if you're ever doing washing up, don't put knives in a sink, because that might end up with uh, tragedy, um, or blue plasters all around. Um, tidying up your area, because we need now to roll out our flatbreads. We're going to get a um, beautiful, clean area. So what I like to do now, because this is why one of the reasons also I have a um, blue paper towel, I just use that to wipe down any bits that are in the way and then we're going to start rolling out our flatbreads so before we do that we need to make sure our pan is on so I'm going to turn my pan on to a medium heat medium high so we get a nice bit of, uh, of heat into it when we cook our flatbreads I use an induction hob so that's about a number seven if you're using gas uh, it's about three quarters of the way round so just pausing very quickly for you to uh, catch up. Uh, any of you who are um, ready for the next stage, vegetables are cut, the marinade is made, that's all been mixed together, that's gone into the oven, 220 degrees. The next thing we're going to do is make our flatbread. So we're going to bring our dough back into play and we're going to have some flour to hand so that we can um, make sure nothing sticks. I'm going to show you two ways, one with my hands, one with a little rolling pin, if you have a rolling pin, if not, don't worry, we're going to do both methods today. So we've got dough, some flour, rolling pin if you're using, and my frying pan which is heating up over here. If you have a little um, a flipper, that's going to help you, or some tongs, um, I um, find them really easy to do. Sometimes if it's quick I need to grab them out with my hands, but we want to be safe today, so use appropriate tools. So let me show you what my dough looks like. It's not going to puff up too much, okay? It doesn't have yeast in it. We've not left it to rise in a warm place, but it's beautiful. If you have, um, if we've spoken about the olive oil, you'll have that over the top. All you need to do now is just kind of squeeze it in with your hands as you work. So what I'm going to do here is put some flour on my bench, take out that bit of uh, dough. And I'm going to divide these, so I said that this recipe will make you four lovely ones, okay? Now, table knife, great to do this with. Or, you know, a chef loves a tool, a chef loves a gadget. If you have any of these dough scrapers, these are the, this is the time to use them, okay? So you do a little cut through. Nice and easy. 
We want to roll the dough into a round, like so, and then give that a little puff, a little push down, so it's not puffing up. Okay. Do the show you that again. Roll in your hands. Give it a little push down to stop it puffing up. Or if you want to, guys, make a little dry spot, and you can roll it on the table. This takes a lot of practice, but you're basically doing the same thing in your hand. You're rolling it so that you've got a nice round, giving it a push down. The push down also is going to help us with our um, uh, with our rolling as well. There we go. All right. So a bit more flour here. Push that down now. Here's the way to do it without your using your uh, rolling pin. Okay, you can see what I'm doing is I'm kind of giving you a little tug, a little pull, a little stretch out. And as I do that, what's happening is you can see actually if you pull it, it kind of shrinks back. That's the gluten. That means it's really worked really well. Let's get that started so it gets thinner and thinner as you're working. And keep teasing it through your fingers. So it's pushing, twisting, pushing. Interesting. As you pull it, it gets nice and flat. And there we go. That's a simple, rustic flatbread. Okay? Easy. Or if you're using a rolling pin, you can start off by just giving it a little push down. And your rolling pin then, walk the rolling pin backwards and forwards a few times and across ways so that it gets as flat as possible to then be able to roll backwards or forwards. Now, if you want to have a slipper style, as in long and oval, just keep going backwards and forwards in the same direction. Um, but if you want to have a, a more round one, then you twist it 90 degrees, and then we have a rounder flatbread. If your dough is sticking, just pause, add a little bit of flour, like so. All right, so now I have two flatbreads. You have to remember when you're doing this how big your frying pan is. Here's my frying pan over here, okay? Looking good, getting nice and hot. Mine is beginning to smoke a little bit, okay? So it's been nice and hot. You have to be careful with this when you're adding your flatbreads in. What we want to do is give that a little tug, okay? Now you can see my flatbread is about the size of that frying pan. If I try and put this one in at the top, things aren't gonna work. So this is where things can slow down a little bit because we're cooking one at a time. We're gonna add a little drizzle of olive oil on top, not too much, and then we're going to use some seeds. So today I'm using um, onion seeds or nigella seeds. You can use poppy seeds are great, though they do create a, lo a, a lot of mess in the kitchen. Um, let us know in the comments um, about what seeds you've used uh, and why. You know, is it something that you prefer the flavour of? Is it something you just had to hand? You know, if you wanted to make a really lovely thing with this, you could put cumin seeds in. You'll notice. Hopefully, I'm just beginning to get some bubbles on this. Look at this little air bubble popping up. Okay, a few coming up here. That's because we left the pan warm up really quickly um, before we got started. If we put that into a cold pan, it's going to take ages and ages, and actually it won't cook that nicely or that quickly. While we're waiting for that, you can see I've, I'm not really doing anything with this uh, frying pan at the moment just leaving the heat to do it. If I move it around, what happens is I move it away from the heat. And that's obviously a bad thing because the heat is what's doing the job for us. It's cooking for us. Okay. And um, once we've got lots of bubbles going on, okay, you can see a few more popping around the side. I'm just going to have a little look underneath. Okay. And now I can tell it's done. So I'm going to flip it over. You can tell it's done because you've got this beautiful beginning edges are beginning to brown up okay now the olives the olive oil and the um, the seeds underneath they're going to cook a little bit and that is going to create really a great amount of flavor inside our uh, dough you should also now have something to hand you have your tea towel that you covered your dough in have this to hand and a plate because what we're going to do is we're going to wrap our flatbreads as they come out of the frying pan in this tea towel. And this is one of the reasons why I love induction hobs is it's very safe to work with, you know, there's no open flame to work with here. So um, I can put that right next to it. 
Flipping that over, you can see I've got some nice uh, color, bits of brown on there. In that goes to the tea towel, popping that on top. What that does is it creates a nice steamy environment. I'm going in with my two slipper-sized flatbreads. With some olive oil on top, just a drizzle. And my seeds, okay? So the, um, the steam that's happening inside the tea towel here, that's uh, helping us keep the flatbread uh, nice and soft so that when it comes to eating it later on, it's not too dry. And it's going to stay nice and warm for us as well. This one's really fluffing up nicely. I tend to find I got lucky. I will um, I'll be honest with you guys. Normally, the first flatbread you do is a little bit flat. Okay, It doesn't have these lovely bubbles. I got lucky today. Um, mainly because I left the pan to warm up, okay? It's about patience. Um, this one's bubbling up straight away on these two. Remember, this pan's nice and hot, being careful with it. We're gonna got our, our flipper, okay? If the pan is really hot, it's gonna take less time to cook. So I'm just gonna have a little sneak peek underneath. I've got lots of lovely brown, uh, brown which is lots of flavor underneath. Giving that a flip. Look at this, beauty. Now, at the School of Food, we also have a wood-fired oven. Um, and these are just absolutely incredible to do inside of that one of those. So if you have something like that at home or a mini, um, a mini pizza oven, which is all the rage at the moment, these are great to work on. Um, or these also work really good on barbecues. So if you roll them into smaller bits, kind of like this sort of size, okay, probably the size of a, an orange, on the on the uh, on the fire pit or on a barbecue, that's going to be really lovely and smoky bread you're going to create, okay. Remember guys, the second side doesn't take any time at all. You can see lovely browning happening on this one. Popping that over there. And then my last flatbread, in we go. Pop it down, adding a little bit of oil. When you get further into this, so when, by the time you do number three or number four, you might find that your pan is, is really hot uh, and begins to smoke with the oil and the seeds in it. That's absolutely fine. What you can do is you can just turn that down a notch or two. So I'm on a seven. I'm actually going to drop that down to uh, a five and a half. You don't have to worry about that, that temperature being so fierce underneath because you know the pan is hot. But as you can see, your bubbles happening straight away. Don't forget about it. But I'm keeping an eye on what's happening in my oven. I've got a couple of minutes left on my timer. Looking good. It smells great as well. Okay, count them. Yeah, we're ready. So actually, I'm going to get mine. Um, I'm going to do two things really quickly. First of all, I'm going to flip my flatbread. Okay, you can see I've got a nice brown color there. Okay, and then as I've come over to check, I actually see my beautiful vegetables. So we've got some nice colour happening on top of my onion here. My tomatoes, if I poke them gem very gently, they just ooze. So that's creating a nice bit of flavour. I'm going to put that down to one side. I'm going to come back and serve that in just one moment. Um, and then in we go up here. Now, guys, we have uh, a very uh, quick thing to talk about with the... Um, lovely vegetables here. You can see all those lovely flavours. Um, we have a very quick thing to talk about with our gluten-free flour. This time, you know, you just break it out. You can see if I put this near, it just breaks apart. There's no gluten in it. So what we do is we just roll it in our hand like this, push it flat. Okay. I like to do this as like so. Okay, now these are going to be slightly thicker, but the milk has got lots of beautiful um, fats and proteins in it, which is, makes it a bit better for uh, this kind of thing more than water. It's going to go into my frying pan. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. So um, you can always try rolling this out with a rolling pin. I find sometimes that it does, it, because it's, it's crumbly because there's no gluten in it. It does tend to uh, be a bit harder to do. But these flatbreads are actually really nice because they're, um, when they're a bit thicker, 
because they're really fluffy and they stay nice and, uh, and moist inside. So you've got a really good um, flatbread. You can also push it down gently in your frying pan. Being careful, obviously, guys, is that they're still hot. And I'm just going to turn that temperature back up because the temperature's dropped down again. You always play around with the heat. If you think it's too hot because there's too much steam going on in your in frying pan, turn it down. If you think that it's not happening in your frying pan too quickly, turn it up a bit, okay? When our chefs write recipes, it's because we, um, we think that's probably the best thing for you to do. We don't know your hob at home um, or your oven. Your oven might actually not be as, as hot as my industrial one, so it might not create as much uh, heat when you're working. So your um, onions and broccoli might not be quite so uh, brown and crispy. Just leave it in for a bit longer, okay? Try and get used to your own, um, your own equipment, your own ovens, your own uh, bits and pieces, because that's gonna make your life a lot easier when you're trying to follow someone else's recipe. Hopefully, I'll give you enough uh, confidence in these few uh, weeks of cooking along with me to create some beautiful things. Now, with the gluten-free flatbreads, they don't create bubbles as they do as the um, normal flour ones do. So we're just gently testing with our fingers. You'll feel the warmth coming through your fingertips. Remember, we're just checking underneath if you've got some brown bits. There we go. Lovely. Brown bits. There we go. These flatbreads are going to take another two minutes on this side. These flatbreads, these gluten-free ones, and the um, other ones that I've done in my, in my frying pan here, they all work really well in the oven. And actually, this is a really simple, quick thing. If you want to turn this into a quick pizza base, adding in, um, you know, putting it in the oven, or making that dough, putting it in the oven with your tomato sauce and cheese on top, that's great. In a few weeks' time, I'm going to show you how to make a really, really simple pizza dough um, that uh, you will love. But for now, I'm going to show you just how to finish things off and um, on my plate, I've got one of my flatbreads, okay? To help me serve, okay, I'm gonna just get some tongs out, but if you've got some spoons or anything, okay? So my flatbread is here. Do be careful when you're handling a hot tray. Remember, it's always hot, even though it can't, has out of the oven, it's still gonna be really roasty. What I do is used to use this, my, um, back of my tongs or my fork or whatever I'm using to serve, just to squish those tomatoes down. What that does is it creates beautiful sort of sauce. And as we do that, guys, we're just gonna serve that. Lovely, crispy bits, like so. Um, I suggested in the recipe that if you wanted to put a bit of fresh yogurt over the top of this with some beautiful bits of herb, then you're gonna be um, in for an absolute treat. There we go, guys. We've got lots of beautiful things in here. Um, I uh, forgot to pick up my parsley from the, ki from the kitchen gardens today. Unfortunately, it wasn't growing that well, so um, I, I left it a little bit longer to think if it was going to help. Unfortunately not. Um, this is when we'd add the parsley, okay? So um, it's always good for the chef to remember his ingredients. Um, chop your parsley, um, and then kind of just sprinkle this over the top. But there we go, guys. We've got our beautiful coloured edges, so that's really nice browning caramelisation happening flatbreads underneath and what's going to happen is all that lovely juice is going to sink down inside like that. Well, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed making these delicious flatbreads. Okay, um, I'm certainly going to enjoy tucking mine in now. Um, just to show you as well, the gluten-free flatbreads, look at this. You wouldn't know the difference, would you? They're beautiful, guys. Absolutely fantastic. Um, everything's going to work together with all the flavours combining. Please, if you've enjoyed today, come and see us again next Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Um, the recipe's already up on the website. We did a little Instagram uh, poll over the weekend, and it was uh, sweet potato muffins versus cheese and spinach scones. And I'm going to pause very quickly because Calton's going to ask me a question. Yeah, I've got a question about how can we send videos of Fantastic. That is a great question. It's almost like you read my mind. Uh, thank you very much for asking that question. How do you send your videos and photos to us? If you're on Instagram, guys, please tag us uh, at Hackney School of Food or uh, on Twitter. It's at Chefs in Schools. Alternatively, guys, um, email us to hello 
at hackneyschoolofood.com. Um, Council is going to just write those down and put them in the chat box for you now. So um, send us that way. I love to see what you're up to um, and the fantastic creations. I've seen some beautiful soups and breads over the last couple of weeks. So it'd be lovely to see what you've done with the flatbreads this week. Thank you very much again for joining us. Um, next week, as I say, we've got our results of our poll and it was the cheese and spinach scones that won. Good strong start. Sweet potato muffins almost took over, but they didn't. So the recipe for that is up there next for next week's uh, Wednesday for live cook along with me at four o'clock. We're also going to do a nice apple and carrot coleslaw to go with that so that we've got a nice well-balanced meal with that it's really delicious i hope you join us then for now guys thank you very much i've been chef tom at the hanging school of food and uh, enjoy your flatbreads and we'll see you again next wednesday four o'clock take care happy cooking <laughs>